All right, I'm going to try cutting the, um, the rabbit on the top of the plane, and I'm going to do that with a rabbit plane. It's not going very well, so I'll film a little bit of this, and uh, All right, I'm getting real close. I got one blade, one plane that's working real good. So I'm going to finish this up, I think, with this one. I got a scratch in there. All right. Probably hit it with some sandpaper, but I got a little bit of it. Just a little decorative curve, curve in here. Nice flat face along here but a little scratch and I'll take that out. So let me set up again and go on to something else. All right, so now I have a, a straight edge with a very square face. It's about two and a quarter inches tall and it's set on my the line that I have for the bed on the escapement side. So now I'm gonna use my cheap back saw and hold it against the the guy so the idea is that the on this side the back saw will stop right where it contacts the bottom the bottom of the shoulder on this rabbit that I just cut. The other side back down here is going to come within a quarter of an inch of the other face where I put that layout line earlier. Okay, so you don't want to go too far either way. You don't want to cut too far, too deep here, and you don't want to cut too deep on the other side. And you want this to be, this bed is going to keep the blade square and the wedge pocket square. So you want this to plunge down 90 degrees to the face of the plane. So now I'll... Uh, turn this around and I'll cut the other side which is for the wedge okay see 
same thing. problem. The saw is hitting that. Okay, so the idea is to come right up against this layout line right here. That's my quarter inch layout line. So I'm pretty close to that. And then I'm right up against the bottom of this shoulder on the other side. So now I'm going to take out a lot of this and start excavating that with my chisels. And then set up to bore and chop the wedge pocket from the top of the plane. So I'll do this first. All right, I'm going to start chopping this thing up. So let's see how this goes. So let's compare. Okay, so it's about it's about a quarter of an inch from the top of that shoulder. Goes straight down, and then the rest of it is tapered into the the other area. So let me cut that first.
Okay, so one of the ways I could check the depth, I know a one inch piece of steel has to fit in here, so I'm not quite there yet. Got another three sixteenths of an inch. I think I'm pretty close. close so now let me, let me flip this around Okay, I'll dress that up once I get the pocket cut. So let me cut away and I'll get this set up. We'll start with the wedge pocket. So I got a large block clamped to the plank. I have the body of the plane clamped to the block. Then I have my 50 degree um, chiseling jig also clamped to the block on the table and to the body of the plane. Then I have a straight edge flying up past everything and I have some spacers and finally in here behind this clamp I have uh, a bushing to accept the 3 16 drill and that's all in line with the wedge pocket as set at the correct angle. So now I'm going to bore a hole and I should come out into the escapement and be somewhat in the middle of the wedge pocket. Hopefully I don't stray too far. Well, let's give this a try.
let me break this apart and we'll set it up for another bore. Alright, one more hole on the second setup. Hopefully this goes well. take this apart and set it up again for chiseling. Alright, let's see what I could do with the chisels now. I'm going to use the scrap steel again. Try and get my lines right where I want them. So this pocket is, I believe it's laid out to 5 16 thick, so I'll pass my quarter inch chisel and then clean it out with the floats. That's the idea anyway. So it's just a lot of chopping and excavating. So I use this, this block to guide the chisel for the bed of the plane iron and what will happen is the top of the jig will collide with the chisel after I go in, oh I don't know about a total of like 5 eighths of an inch. Then I have another jig cut at the same angle but shorter and that will help me go further into the pocket and right by the time I run out of room with that chisel I'll be through into the escapement and then I can start using the floats. So that's how I do it.
All right. Let me stop. Change the jig. I have the shorter jig in place now. And everything is all set up, clamped, got my spacer, the little blocks. And I already went in a little bit. I'm going to go in a little bit further with one of my homemade chisels. You haven't seen me use yet. But this will give me a little more extension into the pocket. And hopefully this will help. Once I break through into the escapement, then I'll break this down and I'll start working on the uh, using the floats and getting the pocket to the proper size. So I find the the narrower the the wedge pocket is, the more difficult they are to chop. I think the largest one I did was maybe uh, seven sixteenths or a half inch, and you could just really get in there and hit the chisels and widen it open. There's plenty of room to do everything. These, these are, I find them more difficult. So everything you can do to give yourself an advantage really helps. So the guide, this, the, this pieces of steel that give you the space, the size of the chisel, the length of the chisel, the sharpness of the chisel, the boring of the holes, it all makes it a little bit easier. If you start to take away all those advantage, advantages, this, this becomes quite a chore. Um, 
it also helps like everything else um, once you do this a few times it gets easier so you can't be discouraged right at the, the first one and just assume that they're all going to be the same difficulty because chances are they won't. You'll run into complications. You know, some wood might be tougher than others. There's no denying that. It's the whole affair is unpredictable. But I could probably make one statement with confidence and say that the more you do this, the easier it's going to get. So, it's just like everything else. You have to condition your, your, uh, your working style towards the end goal. If you can't put in the time, then you're probably not going to get to the point where you want to make many of these. You'll you'll give up before that. So bottom is starting to get pretty mushy so I think I'm starting to break through the wood fibers into the escapement yeah there you go there you go okay so now this is a good place to stop and what I'm gonna do is break all this down and set up the blank so I could start working on the floats that's the next important step All right, I got everything set up the way I want it. I have a nice square block in line with the bed of the plane. And I'm going to use that as a guide and square it up with a chisel. So the idea is that this this face, the bed of for the iron, is um, well. Actually, that's not the that's not the bed. That's the the wedge side of the pocket. But anyway, all the geometry is the same, and it's important to keep everything parallel, square, and rectangular. Even though it's on a taper, it's a rectangle. So. Um, it just makes everything easier rather than have things sloppy and then have to custom fit the wedge and the blade and all that other stuff to uh, irregular geometry so I like to keep careful attention to the squareness of the blank and the squareness of the block the sharpness of the chisel and so on and um, it makes the plane a little bit easier to build and it also makes uh, in my opinion it makes the blade perform uh, the plane perform better so there are many benefits to keeping to keeping the geometry as nice as you can and you can see 
down here there's very little that was trimmed away so that's it's not much of a big deal <coughs> okay so I have all <coughs> sharp chisels <coughs> excuse me ready to go I have all my floats here and before I get involved in that <coughs> Let me show everybody the blades that I prepared. Um, they're both identical except one is for the hollow and one is for the round. And what I did was these were these were nested together in a one inch blank like this. And I cut the middle out with the grinder, the four inch angle grinder, finished it all off with the hacksaw, filed this part of the blade and then hit it with stones and I set everything with the micrometer so these came out real nice and they're within a few thousandths of each other and you can see what they look like this is the way I like to have them and the reason why I like to have them just the way they are now is because I'm going to use these blades to fabricate the wedge pocket and trim the bed and all that other stuff because this is a straight edge so I have the factory edge of the stock is along here so that'll fit inside and be uh, a guide a straight edge for me to determine how straight the bed is and the wedge the wedge side of the pocket and then also um, I'll use the sides of this part of the blade to check for rocking and stuff like that and the idea is that I want this to fit tightly once I get to the point where um, I really can't do any more trimming without pressure on this from the wedge then I'll stop the process that I'm at now and I'll fabricate the wedge and then I'll tie the fabrication of the wedge into the trimming of the pocket so that everything is mated together. I'll have a flat and straight bed, I'll have a square pocket, and I'll have a perfectly true wedge that serves the purpose of holding everything tight against the bed to prevent chatter. So I create a little pocket in here so that I can slide this through and uh, that's the way I'll take it from here so let's talk about floats um, I have a bunch of floats you'll you've seen me make them and you've seen me use them throughout my videos uh, the other thing that I use occasionally is just a regular old sawzall blade and I'll either pull it well in this case I have to pull it because the the point is tapered and that's the only way it'll go in the pocket but I also have a customized one I just wrap the end of it with tape and this I can use on the push stroke I like this one a lot and this is down and dirty you can just make this with a it's got fine teeth on it so it does a real job of getting in the pocket and getting into the corners and I like using it but for the purposes of like a beginner I would say you really only need two floats so this is a 5 16 pocket so I always recommend that if you're if you're gonna start with floats you only need a 3 16 edge float which is right here so I may try and just do most of the work well I, I won't do that I'll pick up whatever I need but for intents and purposes of of someone that might want to start off um, I would start off with a 3 16 edge, edge float um, that'll that'll adequately do a wedge as thin as a quarter of an inch once you start getting below a quarter of an inch like if you were going to do a 3 16 wedge it would be real difficult to use a 3 16 float because it would already have to be big enough to pass the float in and I don't, I don't know if that's the way you really want to go but in any case for this one 3 16 edge float is a real good place to start and then a 3 16 side float 
and this has the 10 degree taper on it so this will go all the way in and you can see the bottom of the float passes the, the end of the float passes through the bottom of the plane so um, you'll be able to get a complete cut and uh, that's that so but I will use whatever I feel is appropriate at this point to uh, to do this work so uh, I have some other I have a small face float that I may use it's got some really good teeth on it I have a quarter inch edge float edge float which eventually will fit this is a 5 16 pocket I have a 1 inch a uh, 1 8 inch which will get way in there and the teeth are cut finer I have a quarter inch side float that I may use so uh, you'll see me just pick up stuff and use it and that'll be that so the first thing I want to do is just see how flat this is and where all the where all the the high spots are so I could see there's a high spot inside the um, inside the wedge pocket so let me get the side float and try and trim that down got a little bit of a oh, this this fell on the floor so let's see how this looks straighten that out break that off okay so that's that's looking good okay Let's go to an edge float. This is pretty constricted here. All right. Let's see how we how we're doing here and through the side okay so that's much flatter let's see what we got through here okay and okay we got a way we got a ways to go this has to go now straight down now the other thing is the width of this part of the blade is also the depth the depth of this pocket so I can also check uh, how well I'm doing the progress of this of this excavation because I want this surface and the edge of this blade to line up. So I have I have a heavy sixteenth of an inch to go. So in terms of the side float. I can do a heck of a lot more work with that but what I also want to do is I want to make sure that uh, because the 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 end of the escapement is right on my lines back here so what I want to do is I want to put pressure on this float and basically create a straight line from where I have to be here to where I already am back here so it's not it's not it's not a complete cut so I'm gonna I'm gonna be focusing the pressure on this float back here and drop this end of the pocket down and what I want to do is keep using this the the piece of steel that's here on the end the end of the blade as a straight edge and drop this pocket down until I can actually fit the blade in and begin to line it up and and dial it in that way
see here. I don't know if you can hear the car alarm outside. I apologize for that extra noise. My neighbors are uh, out of it, to put it politely.
Okay. We're getting there. I have the mark that I made on the other side. That looks pretty good. This should be real close. And it is. Get in here with a little bit finer float. Okay, this is pretty flat so I think what I want to do now Okay, I want to do the same thing, but now upside down. I want to put pressure. I have, I'm very close to my line back here on the wedge pocket, but I want to concentrate the pressure on the float back here and open that up so that the sides of this pocket back in here are parallel to each other. Right now, I got one that's really flat and another one that's closed. So I want to open that one up, this top one, open it up slightly. Now this you have to be careful with because you're, uh, you're basically working upside down. If there's a better position that gives you more comfort, I would recommend it. Um, what you especially don't want to do in a situation like this is just, especially right here at the top of the plane, is start to widen stuff and just make everything fatter. Um, if you're doing one plane, there's really no harm in making a, uh, a 5 sixteenths pocket a little bit wider and going to 3 eighths. You can custom make the wedge for that. And then you'll just have a little slot where the, where your blade passes through the wedge pocket. That's really not a big deal. Um, if you're making multiple planes, you know, if you're making six planes and you want them all to have a 5 16 pocket, then you got to discipline yourself so that when those planes are done and you're looking at them, you see those, those wedges all look like they were twins. So, that's the whole idea with that. Okay, now the other thing I can do, because my quarter inch float is a little bit better. Okay, so now I can get this, now I can get this in here. So you don't, you don't want to overcut. 
this is this is a very this can be very repetitive fitting all this stuff but it pays off in the long run when everything fits tightly see what you have to remember is that at this stage uh, even though it's still you know well into the future this is going to be a working plane and so what the work that you're doing here is going to affect the performance of the plane and it's also going to affect how it looks so it's an investment in time so I take my time I try and not rush myself now the other thing I like to do which you just saw me do is this is the factory side of the float so what I'll do is I'll do a few strokes okay this is pretty close to straight because I'm looking at my layout line back here on the top of the plane and I'm looking at this line that I created for the bed but what I can do now is I could also check the flatness so I have a little a little rock right here so I'm gonna have to see even though the bed is pretty much right where I want it I'm gonna have to come in a little bit but that's So what I may do is leave all that now for when I have the wedge because there's no sense in me trying to second guess how this will all behave when uh, when I have the wedge I might as well just wait so at this point it's still a little bit away Okay, let's see, how does this look? Check this for flat again. Okay. Here's the quarter inch side float. Okay, so you get in here with a 
small afloat. So it's, it's confined right inside there. So let me just keep going with all this. Let's see how this looks. Okay, we're getting real close. real snug so let me just open this up a little bit let's see this has got any rock to it let me let me 
clear all this out. quarter inch side float. This has got a nice flat face on it. So I want to push this in here and just see if there's any rock to it. That'll give me an idea of, of how flat it is. And it's pretty flat. So now I'll turn it over and pull it up against here. This has got a little bit of a rock to it.
Now it's pretty darn good. It's a little slack in there. If you can get it tighter, that'll help. But that's no big deal. So now the other thing that I have to do because this section of the of the uh, of the iron is a little on the long side. So what I'm going to do is make a mark right here and I'll take a section of this and move this iron in and then I can just get an idea of how much longer it is. It's roughly, it's roughly a quarter of an inch. So. Alright, I'll do that off camera. Alright, this is a good place to stop. And uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna fabricate the wedges and tie the wedge into the into the wedge pocket and the blade and uh, take it to the next step.